Hello and welcome to today's live webinar where we look at the ASX investment opportunities in review. Any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation or offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realise that, realize that not all investments are appropriate for every individual. <clears throat> Coming into the um, members area here and going to watch list going across to here and dropping down to have a look at the recent ASX signals. We'll start by going through those. Uh, so we click on the first code in the list here and let's just start toggling through these and I'll provide some comments. I've made a short list of the opportunities that I think are most compelling from the last seven days. So just to recap, the recent signal list, which we're now looking at, holds the last seven days worth of signals. So um, some of these are a little bit outside of sort of the area or scope of companies that I analyze. So some of them I'll skip through fairly quickly. Uh, what you will notice when you uh, look through the algorithm signals is a lot of the yield sensitive names. So real estate investment trusts, infrastructure, utility companies are under current algorithm sell signals and prices are up against sort of the resistance at the moment. I'll speak uh, about that a little more as we go through some of the other stocks. So you can see here a, a number of <clears throat> lower low, lower high patterns within these signals. So here's a buy signal in BLG. That might be one with you, where you just keep an eye on, look at the short term momentum indicators to turn positive and uh, have a think about that. Uh, so the banks all had what I would describe as a short squeeze last week where ANZ uh, increased their share buyback from 1.5 billion to uh, one uh, to three billion, and that was partly the catalyst behind the banks uh, having a rally. Maybe the rally had already began a day or two before, but that certainly uh, added sort of momentum to the rally. But given that the banks had been um, sold off so heavily, and offshore fund managers were shorting the banks uh, with the Royal Commission occurring, I think there was a bit of a scramble to cover those shorts, and that partly explains why we had such a sharp, abrupt rally in the banks last week. Uh, Bank of Queensland, we've had a short signal here on this lower high formation, and I think the regionals still struggle over the next you know, six to 24 months and the momentum is probably still to the downside in the regional. So sitting on the short side of this with a stop loss above is certainly something that traders could have a think about. And I still think longer term investors need to be cautious with their asset allocation towards Australian banks, uh, even though they're down sort of somewhere in the order of 30 odd percent from their highs. Um, here's an example of a real estate investment trust, uh, uh, <coughs> as is the case their Caltex. Uh, the the rally that we're having in Caltex, I think, ultimately presents a selling opportunity. So somewhere between, say, this thirty-two and maybe thirty-four dollars is where Caltex runs in the resistance, and I think that starts to roll over and maybe trades back down to slightly lower levels. Grain Corp goes ex dividend. I don't have the calendar in front of me, but in the next uh, maybe later this week, possibly Friday. Uh, but we've had an algorithm sell signal here after. So we had a buy at 7.55, a sell at sort of 8.20, and we're out of that stock at the moment within the model portfolios. GPT, so around this 5.50. So what you've actually seen that's, dri that's driving this rebound in these yield names is even though US raised interest rates two weeks ago, the actual bond market, the yield on the longer end of the curve on the you know, five, 10 year treasuries and, and even out to 30 year treasuries is actually showing less confidence in global growth. And those yields have actually come down. So when yields uh, at the come down, then that's obviously bullish for your yield sensitive names. So that's what's helped to drive this recent uh, rally in these, but they're probably all getting fairly close to resistance, I would think at the moment. Uh, and you, and I suspect the GPT probably largely just bumps along sideways uh, where it is at the moment. Um, health scope. So I think this one's an opportunity. So I've just realized that maybe the video wasn't uh, coming through there. Um, 
Let me just double check this before we carry on. Okay, so let's just jump back. So let's go back into the watch list. We go ASX signals, recent signals, and let's start toggling through these names. So this is a group of the stocks from the last seven days. So we'll catch back up to where we should have been there. Apologize for not uh, hitting the button there to display the video. Uh, all right, so moving through these, we can see the algorithm sells signals. This was the one BLG that I mentioned a moment ago. I think you could add that to your watch list. Watch the momentum indicators down the bottom here and look for those to turn positive under this algorithm buy signal. Uh, Bank of Queensland, uh, as I was explaining, the banks have gone through a bit of a short squeeze and we think that, pro that, that the rally uh, is not a change in longer term trend for them. So you can think about uh, opportunities on the short side with stop losses above the recent sell signal there in BOQ. Uh, Charter Hall, real estate, so these are the yield sensitive names, so up against resistance. Uh, Keltex uh, getting close to resistance between $32 and $34. Grain Corp, uh, that was the stock that's removed from the model and that was a profitable trade buying under this algorithm signal here and selling under this signal here. Uh, GPT up against resistance. Uh, not doing anything on that one. Healthscope. So this is a name that I think you should add to your watch list uh, and maybe watch this momentum indicator. But I think the stock's good value down here around 215 to 220 range and that provides a buying opportunity and we've started adding that into por portfolios uh, today and late last week. So a Hellscope HSO, maybe make a note of that one. Uh, James Hardy, this is a difficult one to buy because of concerns around uh, the housing market and, you know, is it slowing down? But certainly in the US, there's no sign of that. Uh, and a big part of uh, James Hardy's earnings are from the US. So we've had the algorithm buy signal here at around 2150. And the stock's moved up a little bit, uh, but maybe it's one that you look at and have a think about a stop loss, say on a trade back below $21. But we have started adding this into portfolios as well, and it's been a recent addition into uh, the ASX uh, 50 or 100 model portfolio. Uh, live Hire, this is a little like a Seek style business uh, and not a company that I follow closely but with the stock now down here at 57 cents maybe it's one that you can have a think about look at the shorter term uh, momentum indicators uh, given I don't know a lot about the fundamentals of the business probably one that you want to be thinking about running a stop loss on MVB, so we've had a good rebound in this. Uh, it was originally added to the model ETF model at about $26, and we've had a, a gain here up to around $28, and we've now had a sell signal. So that's interesting that across the banking ETF, so this is a basket of exposure to all the ASX listed banks through the MVB uh, ETF, and we're just getting a sell signal here up at around this $28 level. So that's something just to keep an eye on there. Uh, not doing it there on that one. Pioneer Credit, just an interesting, just to point out, that had a big reversal from its lows and continuing with a little bit of a recovery there today. Uh, the beta shares currency ETF, oh, sorry, the commodities ETF. So we had a buy signal on this on Friday at $9.70 thereabouts, and the stock certainly, uh, the ETF's pushing higher. So that gives you broad base exposure to the resources or, or to commodities. Uh, <laughs> Rural Funds Group, not doing there at the moment. Centre Group. Uh, as with most of these yield sensitive names, so with this one is obviously within the REIT sector, probably pushing back up against resistance here. Centre Group's a little bit unique in that they're doing a $700 million share buyback, but I think the most part of this rally's done. I don't think the stock should compress anything below 5% dividend yield, which is about where it's trading at the moment, uh, especially given they only have about 3% earnings growth, so not looking for this to trade any higher from where it is at the moment.
Uh, Sigma not doing there at present. Uh, Superloop, uh, just to keep an eye on that one, but not really part of our focus. Sydney Airport, so Sydney and Transurban come into the, paying their dividends later this week, uh, and we feel that both of these names have had a good rally as US yields have moved lower, but up against resistance where they are at the moment. We don't see them trading too much higher. So the same there with Transurban. So it's just noting that they're under algorithm sell signals and we probably think that they're up against resistance at the moment. <clears throat> uh, just moving forward through a few of these. And then there we are. So that's toggling through the uh, top of the recent signals. So just a recap. So HealthScope, QCB, which was the uh, resource ETF, and James Hardy, which is JHX, are the three main ones that are sort of... Uh, that are capturing my attention from those recent signals. So if you make a note of those and you may like to revisit those. So now what we'll do is go into the model portfolio and just have a look at sort of some of the recent changes here. So within the ASX20, probably the point of note here is that, uh, and we'll just organize this in percentage terms. So Amcor has been added to the ASX20 uh, index that happened last week. Uh, and at the margin, that's going to help create some you know, additional incremental buying as fund managers just help to rebalance portfolios in line with the index. Uh, from a fundamental standpoint, Amcor should grow earnings somewhere around, sort of, I think, somewhere around that 4 to maybe 6% over the next 12 months. And the stock's now trading on about a 4.5% dividend yield. So we quite like Amcor, but we think it's a stock that it pays to add a covered call over it uh, to try to boost that cash flow. CBA, uh, we've seen a fairly substantial recovery in this. It was added to the portfolio at $76 and it started to recover. So this includes the dividends. So I've really only got two stocks in the model that are underperforming. Wes Farmers has done very well, as is BHP, Rio, Origin, IAG and CSL. So interesting at the moment that out of 20 stocks on the ASX, we've only got... Uh, maybe eight names that uh, qualify to be in the top 20 model at the moment. And that's a fairly consistent theme that I've commented on that we're noticing that the number of stocks in the models has actually reduced from sort of tradition, historically running at around 60, 70% allocation. We're now down to 50% you know, or less. If we have a look at recent positions that have been closed, um, uh, so we had uh, CBA, uh, Macquarie, uh, but certainly nothing in, in, in the last six months or so. Um, so not a whole lot there to, to comment on. If we have a look at the ASX 50, Again, we just see what uh, AMP is certainly underperforming, as is Fortescue. On the other side of the ledger, we've got Aristocrat, Treasury, CSL, a number of names there that are continuing to do well. AMP, I've spoken about that. The prospect there is that we see a breakup of AMP uh, maybe later this year or early next year. Um, it might be one just to keep an eye on from an opportunity, from an oversold point of view. We continue to actually like Fortescue. We think there's an opportunity there over the next six months to stay long that name. Uh, and then otherwise the others are fairly marginal. So Amcor, CBA, James Hardy was a recent addition to the model, um, Computer Share and Medibank. Uh, this year, probably the standout additions to the portfolio have been Oil Search and Santos. Qantas has done very well. Also, it's up 30%. Okay, if we just scroll down and have a look, and by days uh, held, oh, sorry, looking up here from days held, and we just check to see which uh, stocks have been added to the model most recently, probably James Hardy, Computer Share, and then, as I mentioned, Santos and Oil Search. But out of those, James Hardy's the one that we're accumulating. Uh, as we looked at the chart earlier. If we come back down here and look at positions closed, we can see that um, there hasn't really been uh, anything if we just arrange this by sell date. So we had uh, Westpac that was closed um, most recently on the 15th of May, uh, ANZ, which was closed out on the 11th of May, 
Uh, MGR, which was Mervac Group, that was closed out early May. That was a 17% gain. Uh, Transurban, which was closed out for a 5% gain. And then you can keep going down that list. So again, how I did that was just looking at the sell. So this we're looking at recently closed positions and we've arranged it by sell date just to have a look at what stocks have recently been closed from the model and looking at the percentage gain or loss there. So that's the top 50. And if we just quickly revisit the 100 and we bring the days held, so the least number of days to the top, and we have a look there. Well, Health Scope, which is one that I commented on, that's been added into the uh, top 100 model. And just a reminder to ensure that you're getting emailed the changes to these model portfolios, just make sure that that envelope there is green. So if it's gray, you're not getting emailed the changes. And if it's green, it's turned on and you'll get the changes emailed through to you when they occur. So HealthScope's been the most recent addition. Uh, CSR, James Hardy, uh, Computer Share, Harvey Norman, which is hard to get excited about uh, Harvey Norman. I think probably JB Hi-Fi is the better business, but nevertheless, uh, we've had the buy signal there uh, as Star Entertainment, uh, Santos, Tabcorp, and you can start to go through these lists. We've covered a bit of this in the prior week. So Blue Scope Steel's done very well. So has REA Group. So that's one way to do it. So the day's held. And then also just to have a look from a percentage gain standpoint, you know, are there any opportunities here that are, you can buy into that are below <clears throat> the original signal price uh, that um, the algorithm portfolio is still saying that it, it's worth adding it. So for us, I think AMP is on the watch list. We haven't yet sort of gone too aggressive on that. Fortescue, we continue to quite like that. Star Entertainment, I think that's a buy coming into the August earnings result. Uh, Amcor, which we spoke about, that I quite like that as well. Um, so that that's the top 50. And then just to the ASX ETFs, the same thing. If just have a look at well, what's been the most recent addition, or well, this QCB, which is one that we looked at, which is the commodities basket. And if we jump back in there, and then the other one being the oil ETF. So the oil ETF was added uh, on the 4th of June at around $18, and it's now trading just over $19. All right, so let's uh, go into the group of stocks that uh, I think you want to be covering and we're just going to roll through the ASX 100 and revisit some of the ones that we've looked at, the likes of Simic, Santos, Tabcorp, so on. So I'll just start by jumping in here to CBA and you're seeing the selling pressure that CBA is under. So I think that just reaffirms the rally last week was really a short squeeze and I, I don't think you should be having a view that these banks are going to start a new period of recovery. They still face difficulties growing revenue and I think they're moving into a period ahead that's certainly not supportive of um, the quality of, of, of bad debts where, where they've uh, seen uh, sort of bad debt provisioning come down to historically low levels for the banks. Uh, Ramsey, so under sell conditions, I'll move through some of these. Uh, A2 Milk, I think maybe just keep an eye on this at around 874, which was the prior price gap there, may provide a buying opportunity. So it's one to just keep an eye on if you see it pull back below $9. Centre group here <coughs> up against resistance uh, as with most of these yield names. Uh, Ansel, so this has had a big rally uh, following sort of the restructure and spin-off of certain divisions of the company. And I think from a PE standpoint, that's getting expensive. The market scrambled to have exposure to companies that have US dollar earnings as the US dollar has been increasing. And I think that's a fairly mature theme now that's played out in some of these Aussie equities. And as a consequence, they're trading on very high multiples. It's not sustainable. Uh, Brambles under algorithm sell. So lower lows, lower highs. AMP, we've covered that. Borrell, I think this is um, <clears throat> probably you just want to be a little bit cautious here in Borrell. It's not one that uh, we're on the long side of. Uh, Cochlea has just been added to the top 
uh, 50 index. So we've seen IPL removed from the top 50 and Cockley has been added. Uh, the last signal here was a buy at around 160. So we continue to watch that for um, further algorithm buy signals over the course of the next six months. Uh, CSL <coughs> buy signal back here, but looking pretty expensive at the moment. REA group, so that was one that we looked at in the model. That was a buy there. Uh, Sonic Healthcare, we think this is getting too expensive up here. Uh, Sonic's probably down on less than a four, about a 3.5% dividend yield now. Yeah, 3.2% dividend yield on current earnings. It's trading about 22 times multiple, so that's looking a bit expensive for us. Uh, Dulux Group, so we had the Elgo buy signal here at around 7.37. Not one that we're doing much in. Um, I think there's better opportunities else, elsewhere. Mervac, we're cautious on this name and we think that it moves to the downside. Uh, Treasury Wines, we had been a buyer of this and we've taken profit. And that was really just on the premise that it filled the price gap here to around $18. And we're a bit mindful of just how expensive the PE multiple here is on Treasury at about 36 times earnings. That looks a bit too expensive. So NAB, as you've seen with these bank stocks, they, um, they're certainly sort of correcting some of that rebound that they had last week. South 32, out of all the resource names, this is the one we're probably most cautious on. Um, you know, we're comfortable with Oil Search, Santos, uh, BHP, but I think uh, South 32, you know, for the moment, it's under our algorithm sell signal and we're avoiding that. I think better off rotating out of that into other names. BOQ, so sell signal there, um, which I think is worth investors taking note of. Uh, TPG, I'll just skip through a couple of these. <coughs> ANZ. So we'd go without saying that ANZ should be the best supported bank given the extent of their share buyback. But to put this in context, they announced $1.5 billion of share buyback in December last year. And if we think about, well, how has uh, ANZ performed during the first round of the buyback? So if we go back to December and say, okay, roughly at around $28 a share, ANZ started the $1.5 billion buyback, and they've finished one4 so let's just say the first round's already complete. And then they announced another $1.5 billion just here. So when we look at the performance of the stock during the last buyback, it didn't really um, underpin or protect the stock from the sell-off but we, you know, we did have the Royal Commission throughout that period. So, you know, on balance, I think whilst this announcement of another one and a half billion dollars is a positive, it's probably not enough to materially change um, the headwinds that these banks face over the next six or twelve months. So, I, again, that which is why I think it's probably not the start of a new, you know, bullish uptrend for these bank stocks. Uh, Tabcorp, we like this name. I think this is going to surprise on the upside in the August earnings result. I think the market's too pessimistic on what the new integrated business looks like with TATS. And I expect um, the August earnings result, which will come out either sort of the last week of July, first few days of August. But uh, I think investors need to be positioned in, on the long side of Tabcorp coming into that result. So I'm going to add that one you know, to the list for today and I'll just recap these names at the end to make sure you've made a note of them. Uh, Aristocat, too expensive. Simic Group, uh, we don't mind this name so I think we'll add that one to the list as well. So I think that's an opportunity that you should be keeping an eye on. I'm not doing there in perpetual. GPT we've covered. Incitec, so Incitec was removed from the top 50, as I mentioned, and so it still sits inside the ASX 100, but Cochlear has overtaken IPL. I actually don't mind IPL. I think there's an opportunity there for, for IPL around this 350 level as well, especially if the US dollar starts to pull back. So if the US dollar softens, commodities should hold up okay. Um, and within the commodities, I think sort of energy uh, and uh, maybe iron ore probably are the two areas that 
that continue to get some level of support. I'm not doing anything there in Magellan. Uh, Stockland, uh, look, just cautious that resistance up there at around 435. Uh, Stockland goes ex-dividend later this week. Uh, Westpac, so I think the price gap up here to around 20, say $30. So somewhere between where it is at the moment and $30, I think is where Westpac runs into resistance. Uh, Downer EDI we had a sell signal there and it's rolled over, so we're not doing there. Transurban up against resistance coming into its dividend later this week. Suncorp probably getting a bit expensive up here at around, you know, as it nears $15, so that's one that you could watch the momentum indicators to turn negative and there may be an opportunity on the short side there. Uh, Cube Holdings, I think this is probably one on the short side. So again, you could watch these momentum indicators to turn over. I think that struggles. Uh, Bendigo, price gap back up here to 11.33. So between sort of 10.70 where it is at the moment and 11.30, I think becomes a resistance for Bendigo. Uh, computer shares, this is an example of where money scrambled into exposure to US earnings. And I think this has just got too expensive. So to put some numbers on that, computer share trades at around 23 times earnings, 24 times earnings on a 2.2% dividend yield. I think that's just too expensive for the uh, issues that the company faces longer term. Uh, Insurance Australia Group, so this is one of the better performing stocks in the model, but it is getting expensive up here. and I. I think this is something that you probably just need to step back and 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 realise that within the ASX market at the moment, a lot of these growth names are just getting up to very high PEs, and I'm just not sure that there's too much more upside left in this rally. So at 19 times earnings and a 3.9% dividend yield, as much as I really like IAG, I think it's just getting expensive up here. Uh, Medibank, this is not a, I think from an income standpoint for portfolios, this is worth thinking about. There's not a lot of earnings growth here, but at about 18 times earnings and about a 4.4% dividend yield, buying it here and selling a covered call, you're getting 10, 12% cash flow out of it. And uh, you know, I don't see there's too much downside risk to Medibank. Uh, QBE, uh, probably getting to a point where you want to be watching for an algorithm buy signal in QBE uh, into the back half of this year. It's been in a downtrend for a long time. There's a chance that they, they may look to restructure and rationalise their portfolio of insurance assets. And if we just start to get a little bit of positive news flow, we might see this break out of the long-term downtrend and start to make higher highs and higher lows. But it's not an opportunity for today. A ResMed, terrific company, just getting very expensive up here. And we'll have a look at that on the next algorithm buy signal. Uh, AGL, yield sensitive names, back up against resistance at the moment. <coughs> Amcor, added to the top 20 index, about fair value where it is at the moment. You want to be selling covered calls over it to enhance the return. So JB Hi-Fi, so I mentioned earlier in the recording that probably out of Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi, I think this is the better opportunity and comfortable to look at uh, buying this with an initial target up to around 25.50 and think about running a stop loss on a break below sort of 21.75. So let's add that one to the list as well. Uh, Wes Farmers, I think too expensive up here and investors are better off taking profit and taking a look at this again later this year or early next year once they spin off coals, at which time you might want to take a long position in both Wes Farmers and coals and sell tight covered calls over both of those. Uh, and, and that's something that I'll focus on later in the year as we get closer to uh, shareholders voting on the separation of coals from Wes Farmers, which from a timing standpoint, the vote's probably likely to happen in the second half of this year and the actual split will happen early next year. <clears throat> Len Lee's getting expensive. The index itself, I think, up against resistance here. Uh, Charter Hall, Real Estate uh, Investment Trust. Seek, little expensive up here at 22 times earnings. Um, Goodman Group not doing there at the moment. Uh, Orica not doing there. Or in car sales. CYB. So this is um, 
one that we had on our watch list uh, from the last couple of weeks webinar uh, and we had a buy signal sort of on, on this at around this 515, 520 level. We've now taken profit on the trade uh, at around this 570, 575 level. And the reason why we're attracted to CYB was that this was the spin-off of uh, National Bank, so Clydesdale Bank now in the UK. They were making a takeover offer for Virgin Money. Uh, our view was that that should be a net positive for the business and that transaction looks like it's going to proceed. So longer term, I think CYB becomes an interesting opportunity, albeit there are some risks around how the stock performs uh, should the UK proceed with their Brexit, which from a timing standpoint now looks like it's going to be around March next year. Um, and there's no certainty that that follows through. But I think that's the risk for CYB. But longer term, you know, if we get through uh, the Brexit related issues, I think this is another uh, buy side opportunity that we'll revisit next year. But for the, for the moment, we've captured that gain and not doing anything further there. Sydney Airport's up against resistance. Uh, not doing there in Horizon. Actually, I'll just jump back to Horizon just to remind everyone that this is a name that you want to look out for in the back half of this year for it to switch from an algorithm sell signal into an algorithm buy. I think whether the stock can trade down to sort of 375, but it's getting very close to a troughing pattern here and we'll start to see a new higher, higher, higher low and on the next algorithm buy signal, I think it's worth taking a look at that one. Uh, Harvey Norman, preference there, JB Hi-Fi over that. Clean away, not doing it there. Hellscope, so this was added to our list and I think this is a buy down here at around this 218 level. Crown Resorts, this is likely to surprise on the upside in the August earnings result. The company's had uh, probably a more disciplined approach to cost control and as they simplify the business just focusing on the domestic side of the operations and I think that uh, from a valuation standpoint Crown could trade sort of 14, 14, 50. So owning it here and the lower risk strategy is just to sell covered calls and strip out the upcoming dividend and allow for moderate capital growth there. Coca-Cola running into resistance. So we'll look at that on the next algorithm buy. ASX, we really like this company, just too expensive at the moment. Link, watch this as the price pulls back. If you see it back around $7, I think that's a buying opportunity. So we'll add that onto the list. But just put a question mark there from a timing standpoint that maybe later this week if we see it back below $7. Uh, Unibail, this is the uh, company that's taken over Westfield. Uh, it's, it's a CDI listed on the ASX, meaning that we can't do options over it. Uh, having a look at sort of where yield support is for the stock. So if we assume about a 4% dividend yield, uh, fair value is about where it is at the moment, about 1475, 1480. So expect it to mainly trade sideways at or near that level. Uh, Woolworths, we like this just getting uh, quite expensive. Uh, Woolworths now trades at about 20 three times earnings on a 3% dividend yield. And that's really at the top end of, of that valuation range. <clears throat> Star Entertainment, August earnings results should surprise to the upside, looking for Star to move back up into that $5.25. So we add that one onto the list. Uh, IOOF, not there at present. James Hardy, we've covered that one and it's on our list. Uh, Keltex getting close to resistance and you want to be thinking about taking profit or selling call options as a minimum. Uh, so APA Group, uh, the Hong Kong, a uh, wealthy family in Hong Kong has made a takeover bid for APA uh, at a the equivalent of $11 a share. It's trading slightly below that at the moment, just on concerns around whether um, you know the foreign review board uh, actually approved the transaction or not. Uh, Blue Scope Steel. So this is actually done very well on prior algorithm signals. Uh, I do have some concern that from a yields uh, support standpoint, it trades on a very low dividend yield. Um, 
So maybe I think it's probably more likely just to trade sideways. Uh, CSR, this was a recent addition to the model portfolio. So we just add that one onto the list there and we'll revisit that uh, over the next week or two. So CSR at around 465. I still sort of have that concern around some of these building product companies and whether it's the right environment for them to really re-accelerate earnings. Um, <clears throat> so if they do bounce, I think it, it's a question of how long that rally uh, really lasts. Uh, Newcrest doing well, pushing back up towards sort of that $22 level there at the moment, but it's under algorithm sell signals. Uh, Qantas has been one of the better performing stocks within the top 50 model, uh, where, uh, where it's up, I think, somewhere around 30 odd percent uh, and continuing to push a little bit higher. Uh, Telstra. So just to recap what um, I think the key takeaway points were from Telstra's investor meeting last week, we've seen earnings downgraded from roughly $10 billion down to $8.5 to $9 billion range. Uh, we're going to see that continue to deteriorate over the next couple of years as the NBN payments roll off. So at the end of sort of 2021, you know, we may see forecast earnings down as low as $7.5 billion for Telstra. Um, the company's responding by cutting costs and now they've created this separation of their retail assets from their infrastructure assets and internally they're creating a new company called Infrastructure Co which will begin to house and separate all those infrastructure components of the business <clears throat> in preparation for them separating the, them out into two separate company. So should that proceed, uh, Telstra shareholders in 2021 will end up in shares in Infrastructure Co and the traditional Telstra retail business, which should help to unlock value. Uh, but we're still in this environment where um, the market's going to remain concerned around falling uh, revenue and falling profit uh, over the next uh, one to two years. But I don't think uh, this downtrend continues forever and you will find an inflection point that I suspect we're fairly close to at the moment where the stock does start to be rebuild a new uptrend. Just from a technical standpoint, it's worth noting that last time at around 250 to 260 ended up being a, a very significant support level. So whether psychologically we find the stock sort of gets down to that 260 level, which we're not far from it at all at the moment, uh, and that becomes the inflection point where Telstra begins moving higher. Uh, Aurora, not there at present. Oz Minerals, so just the last algo signal, the stock's done well, continues to make higher highs and higher lows. Uh, Whitehaven, Rio, so the last signal there did well, continues to move higher. Uh, Lucas, so these resource names, when you think about this, it'd been in lower low, lower high pattern, then it moved out of that into a more bullish structure and the first signals and it's continued to give us buying entry levels and that continues to do well. Uh, BHP, so we saw oil jump on Friday night off the back of uh, OPEC's announcement and that should be uh, at the margin, I think, a positive for BHP. So we're comfortable owning it here and selling covered calls uh, and what we may see over the next six months is BHP achieve a better uh, price for these onshore oil assets in America. Um, so, and we don't see too much downside risk to iron ore. So it, it, I think from an income standpoint for portfolios, buying BHP and selling covered calls uh, seems to be a, a fair, an okay strategy at this point in time. Fortescue, we may be in the early stages of Fortescue finding support here at around this 450 level. So just keep an eye on those shorter term momentum indicators. But to me, it looks like it's wanting to move higher at the moment. And we're seeing all the iron ore companies uh, expand their production uh, in the Pilbara, uh, which is, a, I think, a vote of confidence for where uh, they see a global demand heading over the next sort of five to ten years for iron ore. Uh, Woodside Petroleum up against resistance there. 
uh, Spark, I think you could probably add this one to your watch list. I think with the APA deal that I spoke about, where they've been subject to that takeover, I think Spark infrastructure at around 230 uh, probably ends up being an okay entry level into that. Uh, Domino's a little bit cautious on this name. I think if we see it spike a little bit higher up to 58, 60 dollars, I think that's a good shorting opportunity. And there we are, back to Illumina. Origin Energy, beneficiary of higher energy prices. And I think uh, between sort of this, you know, Origin could trade 1050, but probably not too much above that. I think a lot of forward positive expectations are now priced into Origin, but we certainly continue to like the company. Uh, Santos, we like this name, so uh, buying this and either selling covered calls up at 650 or just leaving it uncovered. But I think sort of across sort of BHP, we like Santos, we like Origin, we also like, but mindful that it probably doesn't have quite the upside as what Santos does. Uh, oil search is in the algorithm, uh, is in the model portfolio, it was added at around $7 earlier this year. Uh, Northern Star, now not a company that I follow, but I see that pr uh, I think production has been upgraded, which is partly the core of the result of today's spike in price. But this stock's uh, continuing to do well following the recent algorithm signals and CBA we covered earlier. Ramsey Healthcare under pressure and A2 Milk. So there we are. We've cycled through quite a few stocks there. And just to recap, if you've got your pen in hand, so the codes that we want to look at is HSO, QCB, JHX, TAH, CIMIC, which is CIM, IPL, JB Hi-Fi, JBH, Link LNK, but just put a note next to that that you know later this week if you see a pullback below seven dollars. SGR, which is Star Entertainment, CSR, but a little bit cautious on these building uh, names, and then uh, SKI, which is the Spark Infrastructure. So we'll revisit how those names are progressing in uh, next week's recording, and. A couple of the ones that we've taken profit on, which I mentioned, that CYB. Uh, so we scratched that off the list from the earlier weeks uh, and and a couple of shorts, which I'll revisit more in next week's recording. Uh, thank you for listening in. If you've got any feedback that you'd like to uh, send through on these Monday webinars, please email me, leon at investorsignals.com.